Yo, yo, this is John Lee representing the It Doesn't Matter podcast. We are at WrestleMania, SoFi Stadium. Enjoy the show. What's going on, guys? I am Dom. I am here with Abel, and this is the It Doesn't Matter podcast. Woo! Unfortunately, our Padre, John, he's not here today. He is under the weather. I got a few words I want to say about John. Hey, John, Bret Hart never took a day off when he was sick. Get your ass <laughs> over here next time. Damn right. I'm just joking, John. We love you. We miss you. Get better. Swig and a swig for you. Anyways, WrestleMania is over. It was a hell of a week. I want to take another swig. You want to know why? Why? Because today is 950 days for the Tribal Chief. Woo! Acknowledge him right now. Yes. Acknowledge him. Man, I can't believe it's been a week already, man. What the fuck, man? Yo. WrestleMania was... Amazing. What a fucking week, bro. It was what amazing. Week. It wow. was amazing. Shoot, what was your, your favorite match for night one? Night one, I got to go with uh, with Rhea and Charlotte. Man, what a fucking show. Rhea came out, you know, showing her shit. Fucking mommy. Woo! And then obviously Charlotte being one of the, if not the greatest female wrestlers of all time. She might be even the top five wrestler all time right now. You know what's crazy? Um, Rhea winning the Royal Rumble, you would think she would have the main event. But I kind of feel like everybody else that the Usos and the um, KO and Sammy should have had it. Absolutely. But their feud between Rhea and Charlotte, it, like, it was hot in the beginning, then it died yeah, down. Yeah, that buildup, it, it, like you said, it started, and then it just died, died, died. Yeah. They try to keep it, but we just... It wasn't a good it, follow. It died down, but, but the, the ending was perfect. The ending was perfect, and everybody wanted Rhea to win. Yes. And Rhea is amazing, yo. Yes. She is amazing. That match, it was like the perfect match, perfectly built match. It started off slow, then it picked up, yeah. had the high spots, and Rhea went over. I'm not going to lie, man. I got a little emotional when I got, got to the end. I was like, is she really going to pull this off? Because, you know, Charlotte is a GOAT. But then... <laughs> Seeing that riptide from the from the top, I was like, "Yeah, it's over. It is over." Rhea is the goat. Charlotte. Rhea is the goat. Rhea, Rhea is the goat. No way. Rhea, Raw's women's champion, SmackDown women's champion, NXT champion, NXT UK champion, women's tag team champion. You telling me Charlotte couldn't do all that? Charlotte could do all that. She could do all that, but hey, Rhea is the pillar of Pill WWE Ooh. for women's. She's a pillar. No way. She's a pillar. No. Rhea no. is hot right now. Right now? Rhea, no, actually, I, Rhea's been hot since she joined NXT UK. Oh, or yeah, the May Young Classic. Or what was it called? May Young Classic. Yeah, it was. Yeah, right. yeah, so yeah, Rhea, yeah. Rhea is up there. Rhea is one of my, like Booker T said, one of my favorite fives <laughs> for, for women right now in uh, the sport of professional wrestling. So who did you take out that pillar? Because, you know, the, 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 the four horsemen were the pillars that started that whole women's revolution in WWE. Not the whole revolution, but WWE's revolution. Are you talking about between Bailey, Charlotte, Becky, and uh, Sasha? Yeah, we already know who it is that they replaced. Bailey. Yeah. Bailey. And yeah. Even though Sasha's not there, she's still a pillar. I don't care where she goes. She's going to fucking sell out that arena no matter where she goes. Yeah, so. definitely. Mercedes and Monet, keep doing your thing. Definitely. All right. So... WrestleMania Night 1 kicked off with John Cena and Austin Theory. And how would you feel about that match? Honestly, it went where I where exactly I thought it was going to be. I thought maybe there was going to be like a little chicanery where like maybe the ref wasn't looking or, you know, you see um, Austin Theory tap out. And then obviously John Cena thinking he's going to win. Boom. Eight town down. You're right about that. I know you. I I, I kind of want to see him the win, but but Theory got the win, low blow, and hit him with his move, whatever. But I don't. know. The match didn't do nothing for me. It, I, you can't start the match like that. You can't start WrestleMania like that. I feel like it wasn't all that. It was just like a mediocre match. I feel like it should have been in the mid card somewhere. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, but. it's it didn't do. It was cool seeing Cena come out. The fans loved him. He had the Make a Wish kids out there. Cena hit all his spots, five moves of doom, and all that stuff like that. You know, it, but all the it, it is what it is. That. But I don't know. It, it wasn't. It wasn't all that. It, yeah. I, I give it maybe three out of five. 
I, I agree. Yeah, I get, it was just a, a mix, solid match. It's, it was a solid match yeah. overall. That's about it. But it went where it should have went. It though. went where it should have went. But where does Austin Theory go from this? Because I feel like this feud really didn't do nothing for him. Oh, you're looking for like a baby face to like get him to the next level? Yeah. Like, are you gonna be the legend killer? Are you gonna go out for somebody else now? Are you gonna, you you took Ray out the following night, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. But what's next for Austin Theory? Yeah, that's the thing, because uh, with the baby face, um, I don't know. I really can't even think about who he can go after. Because, I mean, Cena's going to be doing Hollywood right now, so backlash, who do you have? Exactly. You got... Maybe Lashley? You got less than a month. He already fought Lashley. Yeah, that's true. Lashley don't know what's Lashley doing right now. That's so. sad, it's man. Sad. How, man. How does he not make Mania, man? Man won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and... He showed up on WrestleMania night two holding the trophy, and that's his WrestleMania moment right there, which is sad. The man had a stellar year. Stout man. Incredible year, man. Yes. He should have been on Mania. Yeah. I don't care how you – you could have added him to night two with um, the Intercontinental belt. Exactly. But we'll talk about that later. Exactly. All right, so our next match we had was the WrestleMania Tag Team Men's Showcase featuring Ricochet and Braun Strowman versus Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits. What do you think about that match? Yeah, showcase, you know, like it's supposed to be. You know, the guys did what they did, they had to do. And, uh, I mean, what's the stakes for it? You just, you know, showing up on Mania for what? They were trying to get everybody on the card. I get it. And you know what? I've been saying this for weeks. I was not feeling that match. But that match showed out. Them guys have potential. Them guys made sure to let you know, this is a showcase. I'm going to show my ass off right now. Of course. And when... Chad Gable hit Braun Strowman with the rolling German suplex. Yo, that little man doing that, yeah. that big dude like that. I think you told me like they're pushing him. They so. push. You know, Gable is over. Otis is over. When he got the tag, <laughs> the place went nuts. I don't know if you've seen the uh, people in the front row. The place went nuts, yeah. and he took out Ricochet. And another time when he came in to, for the uh, what did he do? I got it on my notes right now. I'm trying to remember what I don't know. He did something. I, off the top rope, the place was yeah. well, going hot for him. That's why I kind of don't want him with uh, the models. I kind of want to keep him away. Yeah, that's entertainment type thing. Which but is, I don't know. Is, it was, it, it was, does fit his character. It was cool when he was doing it with the money in the bank and all that stuff like that with Mandy Rose. Man, but I miss Mandy. Yeah, everybody miss Mandy. <laughs> and But you got something special in Otis. Yeah. Definitely. You got something special. He is a special character that he's going to have a breakout year. In are you going to keep him as a character or are you going to have him wrestle as a character? Like, you know how we... Well, basically, not, when we grew up, we always identify guys by the characters. Yeah. Do you want to keep him like a straight character or just, just a wrestler? Kind of like Kurt Angle. Ooh. Well, Kurt Angle started as a wrestler and then he worked himself into a character, but I guess... Otis has a wrestling character, but he was already built as a character, so it depends on how you look at it. Yeah. So he could be, he could be, he could be something this year in twenty twenty three. Chad could be Kurtish, like Kurt Angle ish, but Otis is more Kurt for me. He's got way more potential. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> what are coming with some heat today? What about uh, Angelo Dawkins? He had his moment when Braun was doing the. The clothes, the uh, you know, the freight yeah. train, uh, and he just came out and Monty Brown pounced him on the outside. Yo. I, I, yeah, I just I'm so worried about him because you already know the potential where they're gonna go with Montez. Montez will be champion by the end of the year, if, uh, uh, some kind of champion. Yeah. I don't care what it is. So they're gonna break up, you think, this year? Unfortunately, yeah. You don't let a guy like that just stay in tag team. You see so much money in that, and Vince is always about, hey, I got one guy. I'm making my money off of him. What's going to happen with Angelo Dawkins? That's the thing I'm worried about. Does he turn heel? Do they split evenly? You know, hey, bro, you know, do your thing. I got your back. The last time they had a, a, a solid tag team was the Dudley Boys. Bubba stayed on Raw. Devon went to SmackDown. And Devon turned to Reverend Devon and had Deacon Batista. And it didn't work out for Batista. Uh, for uh, Devon, yeah. and until what was it, Roy Rumble? They came back together like uh, a few months later. Yeah. Hopefully, they don't go down that path. If they no. go, if they break up and they go their separate ways, I just hope it's mutual and Dawkins and 
uh, Montez can do their own thing and just. I don't know. see them getting back together though because there's too much potential in Montez. Montez could be a heel. But do you have enough heels though? We need some baby faces. Is anybody baby face now? Mm, I'm well, going to get back to that later. I'm Cody. Gonna, I'm gonna you, all right. Well, I was going to save for that later, but he was getting booed in LA on Friday night on SmackDown. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> is it not of, on Monday night. Is it because of the city? It could be the city, but also a lot of people weren't truly sold that he was going to get the title. All right, all right. But we're going to hold off yeah, on we'll, that. We'll talk One about more that. thing about the showcase. You've been saying the Viking Raiders should pick to win, but yo, they got busy that match. Yes, man. they I got told busy. You. And that chick, Sarah Logan, yep. uh, Sarah Rowe, Bahala, what? Bahala, yeah. They they got a lot of potential. I told you. But one thing is, they got to split these tag titles. Like, all right, I I love how they try to make the tag titles prestigious again and whatnot. But what? if you got a Raw brand, a SmackDown brand. That's how you do it, you know. I uh, yes and no, only because there's not enough tag teams, actual tag teams. You have like right now the Street Profits, you have Alpha Academy, you have the Raiders and Braun Strowman and Ricochet, but you can see they're gonna split up anyway down the road. Who else do you have for tag teams? Unless you're bringing guys up from NXT. There you go. Well, you got two, you got two guys. That's uh... Gallus. You got Gallus, who's your NXT tag, tag champs right now. Okay. You had uh, Schism, who's about to quit. Well, I wish they don't quit because well, they, they had a lot of potential when they I was, don't know uh, what's going on with that. When they was hot in uh, NXT, the ball head dude. And yeah. The, I can't think of their names right now, but them two were pretty good. Um, Was it the Grizzled Veterans? Gr- yeah, Grizzled Young yeah. Veterans. I like those that guys. It, it was nasty. It's, it's just like we, we talk about this all the time, like between AEW and WWE. AEW is going to focus on their tag teams. I don't know what that was, yeah. but... <laughs> That's Molina. Yeah. That was Molina. My daughter Molina. Yeah. <laughs> AEW does have their tag teams, and they're going to put their main focus on that. WWE is more singles-oriented, um, yeah. so you're going to have your little run, but then eventually, you know, you're going to go your separate way. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult. Why would you want to separate two titles when you could just have just one set team? That go back and forth and give her the brain split. Honestly, you think so? Yes. No, I feel like a lot of guys ain't gonna get the shine. You gonna see the same people over and over if you have that brand split. You don't have to though. You don't have to, but AEW doesn't show the same stars every night. AEW you keep bringing in new talent. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so match number three. Oh, matter of fact, what do you rate that tag team match before we get to match number three? Uh, since I thought it was a showcase anyway, and it. It did better than what I expected. Three, three point five. Yeah, I get, okay, all right. Yeah, it was another solid match. I enjoyed it. Yeah. The next match of the night: Seth freaking Rollins versus Logan Paul. Ooh, oh. Yeah. Obviously, Seth showing out like always. Man. Five stars. Yes. Five stars. Yes. It yo the interests when Logan Paul came in. On the little thing like Sean yeah, did yes. May 12. That was cool. And you know, so this is just... <laughs> you know, um, Vince had to try that out. Or maybe Triple H, because. So, yeah. So, you know, no way. Vince tried everything out before it was actually done. And that's something I, I give respects to him as an owner because he will not have any of his guys do something he wouldn't do. So, exactly. As far as I'm concerned, whatever you guys have feel about him, you know, I got to give him props for that. Yeah, but Vince is a genius. Vince? Yep. Thank you for this. Man, just great wrestling yeah. in life. That's it. But Seth Rollins came out with the big uh, red jacket on <laughs> with the women's gloves and the pink Shawn Michaels was chaps. He, and the, was he trying to pay tribute to Brett and Shawn at the same time? I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah, like I've seen a video backstage of his wife, Becky, and himself. Oh yeah, she and was like jealous of like, him. It's like, wow, I wish I had that. Like, <laughs> so I'm assuming it's like she never seen this shit. Like, hey, that's, that's good a surprise. Though. You go all out. It, but yo, the match was amazing. It it was it showed it it was what we told thought it was gonna be. Oh, we, yeah. We've seen so much of Logan Paul. We're like, yo, this dude is impressive. Logan Paul is here to stay. If y'all still can't get on the Logan Paul bandwagon, yeah, I don't know what something, something's wrong with y'all. Y'all, y'all need Logan to. is nasty. 
Y'all can't stop. He is athletic. He is a wrestler. He can talk. He is the total package. Basically, he he got it right now. He's not Lex Luger, but he's the total <laughs> package. Well, that's, yeah, man. that's something we we talk about plenty of times. It should be in the hall, but yeah, he'll get his due. I hope so before he's gone. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you know, we right? talk about that too. It's like I'm tired of seeing these guys gone and yeah, then they go. Luger the said, if he can make it to the Hall of Fame, he will do his best to walk on stage. Or in the ring now. I, I pretty. I if you can do that, God. hey, I, I, hey, I was not the biggest Luger fan. No, growing up, but the and torture the, rack and the the forearms, I used to love that. But I was not a Luger fan whatsoever. Yeah. I was, and I hated what happened, like you know, after you know, with him and Elizabeth. Yeah. But you know what, man, we all make mistakes. You know, I, I can't, I can't judge nobody. I'm not perfect either, so. Man, he's doing his best. That's and it. If you he know, does walk, oh man, I'm, I'm gonna shed a tear. Everybody gets a second chance at life, and Luger yes. is the reason for that right now. He he had a you know troubled life uh, on the road or during yep. football, steroids and the roid rage and the pills and the drugs and yeah. Miss Elizabeth's death and everything. One thing after another took his thing. Then he went to you know he. What, didn't he, uh, like, fall down in his hotel room and became, yeah. like, paralyzed from, like, the, the yeah. back down or waist down or something like that? And then he yeah. found Jesus and you know what, Luger, could, Luger could tell his story right now. That was, yeah. Luke, Lex Luger is, uh, you know, he is a total package. I, yeah, I got to give it to him now. So. Nah, I ain't taking so. no shot for Luger. He did a lot of that back in his days. So <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that. So the next match on WrestleMania Night One, we had Damage Control versus Lita, Trish Stratus, and Becky Lynch. How do you feel about that? Damage Control is completely and totally done. They are done. Everybody expected Trish to turn, but I did. I didn't see why. Like, what point? Like, well, what, what are you going to get out of? You're not going to get no women's title. I already beat my best friend so many times. You main event at Raw, Becky. Yeah, like, what, what, what just, can we do? Like, why? If, why would I turn on you? Why? A lot of people feel that Trish was going to turn on Lita and Becky. I, I just thought maybe because they wanted to, you know, keep investing into these girls. But I guess we thought the same thing. We're like, they're not going to invest in Dakota and Io, not the way we thought. And I don't know what's going on with Bailey. I mean, I figured she'd be on Raw the next day, but that's a whole other story. So yeah, damage control. The, the match damage. that was probably it was around. Uh, it was okay. It wasn't anything. It, I, was, it wasn't my cup of tea. I don't know. Like I love all three of them ladies. Yeah. And damage control is pretty cool, but it didn't do nothing. Eo should just go solo anyway. She is a star. Yes. Yeah. A star. A star. Yep. Just just watch her NXT days. She was nasty. She beat everybody. She beat. Um, Dakota Kai. I think she beat Bailey. Didn't she beat Bailey one time? Didn't Bailey go down there? I believe so. Yeah, so. There's so much wrestling. I can't keep Yeah, it, it's a lot. I watched a lot of wrestling this past weekend for WrestleMania weekend. And, you know, I try to support as much companies that I can, but. It's tough. It's a, it's a lot. This this week is always the toughest week to just keep up with anything. Yes, yes, for sure. All right. Match number five. One of my favorite matches. Could be the match of the night. Or. Because of the story. Rey Mysterio versus Dominic. Alone, the entrances, when Dom had the, the video of him in prison. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I thought that was Rey for a second, too. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then, you know, he came out with the, the COs and the, and the paddy wagon yeah. and came out with the mask on. Like... The old Halloween Havoc '97 mask. Oh man, that's, oh, that's my one of my God, favorite masks. Man. I wish, I wish he just wore it to the ring until Ray got there, and then he'd take it off and just rip it and just. Would know, have been better it. if he'd uh, had the mask on, but had like a face covering, so you couldn't see his face. So you know that's Dominic right there. And then when his dad shows up, he reveals. That could have been like, you serious? Yeah. So. If they're giving you an entrance like this, they are investing in you. Oh, yeah. Dominic Mysterio is the future. Yes. He is the future. He had a great ass showing against his father. Ray's entrance, he came out in the low rider with Snoop. Yep. With Eddie Girl's theme song. 
It was cool, but I felt like we've seen a lot of Snoop. I kind of wish it was Chavo or Vicky in that low rider. Yeah, because Vicky's not even with anybody right now. So that, oh man. Vicky's another story. But <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to talk about Vicky. But nah, but it would have been cool. Maybe if they was in the in the backseat or something like that. It'd been, it could have been something. You know, At least Chavo, man. Yeah, you know, it's a. They're in LA. It's in LA, and they have a lot of Hispanics out there. So why yeah, not? Why we took not? over. Yeah, they didn't need Snoop, even though it's in. It is, Hollywood, I know. But it, it is really. It's still a cool entrance. But yo, that was a good ass match. And, you know, the crew was with. Everybody was on the edge of their seat watching that match. And then when Ray took that belt off, yep. I think you said, what did you say? Kaite or, uh, <laughs> or what, what the fuck you said? Pa, pato. I don't know what the fuck you said. You said some shit. And then, dale, dale duro. Yeah, you said some shit like that. And like everybody felt that shit. Yeah. Like me being the father and, and kids on the back, you just want to, you know, a couple of times. Like, I know, I'm I know. Something for. You talk back all the time, but yo, like, it was, it was, it was, it was well needed. I know. Man. <laughs> I don't condone beating your kids, but Dom the disrespect his mother. You yeah. don't do that shit. You don't. You Shoot. don't say nothing you back to your mom. You don't do that. Everybody know that. But nah, that was a good ass match. That was a great match. And then they was going back and forth. They was, you know, all right, son. This what you wanted. Go. Yeah. Go. That's it. And then when Priest came out, had the jacket, and then Dom got the chain, and the Bad Bunny comes yeah. in. I was like, oh, okay, I see where this is going. But I I thought Don was gonna get the dub. I thought so too. Which he didn't, but he I, but I, it, that's why I it, predicted it, it, it too it's, with it's Ray. A, it's a story. He might get his dub at Backlash, because I from just from watching now, I can see it's gonna be Dom and Priest versus Ray and Bad Bunny. Yeah. I can see that. Maybe they might get their win in Puerto Rico. If they don't win the Puerto Rico, then I don't know what the hell they're doing. I don't know. If Dom ain't get the win at WrestleMania, I don't know what the you hell You want to piss doing. off the whole island of Puerto Rico? And that, that <laughs> I'll talk about what happened with Bad Bunny at uh, Raw. Yeah, uh, but what about when Dom threw the damn drink in his sister's face? Man. Oh, man. I got I got sisters, too. So. Yeah, that was, I was playing. I know that, I was but it's just standing there like, <laughs> take a step. Shit. Shoot. Everybody know what that was. I know my daddy hot. Shoot. She might have deserved it. She was hot. Shouldn't have been messing with Buddy Murphy. Oh boy. <laughs> That's why mommy got mad. Hit her. That's it. So we already talked about Charlotte and Rhea. But after that, it was a segment between the Miz and Snoop. They out there talking that talk. And then Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee showed up. Yeah. The place went nuts. Everybody loves Pat. Pat is so over, man. I, he's one of those athletes that he should be in, in the WWE permanently. I know he's got his own thing, and I get it. But probably top three guys that transitioned over. Who's the two? That are all. Uh, that transition. Damn, man. Who's the two? You said three. Who's the two? I want to hear this. It's him. Uh, I want to say Stephen Amell. No, he's not an athlete. Well, he is an athlete. Kind of. Actor, athlete, yeah. Uh, I, just, I just had it. I could say Logan Paul? Yeah, there but... There you go. It was somebody else. Yeah, well, when, I, when it comes back to me, I'll let you... But yeah, Logan Paul, why, number one. Why not next year WrestleMania in Philly, why not have Logan Paul and Pat go at it? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, can you imagine? How do you build for that? And you don't even have to. They don't even. They could build that on their they, own YouTube. They, they both talk shit. They both got the power of the platform. Yeah. Of social media. Yeah. They, 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 they could do it. Ooh. They could do it. They could do it. Don booking, man. I love this. Hey. But. The, it all depends on what they need. Yeah, but the other than that, the match wasn't all of that. But Pat McAfee, he showed out did his thing. George Kill got involved, and he closed line the hell out of Miz, and yeah, they celebrated, and that's it. Nothing new. Main event time: The Usos versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Damn it! God, did the better team win for that night? Yes, I gotta say it. So Sammy was so Sammy, fucking yeah. over. He had to get the pin. Oh yeah, he had to because if Kevin Owens got the pin, that shit wouldn't mean nothing. No, it it's crazy. 
because everybody going into WrestleMania night one thinking, okay, it's going to be Rhea and Charlotte. Yep. So I'm thinking, all right. But we talked about this before this podcast. Yeah, like, we all was- wanted the Usos and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to be main event. Just the storyline alone. The maybe. story, like Triple H said after the show, he's like, I was like the one of the top stories right now that everybody was investing into. But once they officially announced that it was going to be the main event, I was like, oh, they're about to win the titles. Yeah. If it was like in the middle of the card, Usos probably would retain. Maybe. maybe. But they gave them their WrestleMania moment. Yes. They had it. They had to, they had to give, well, obviously not talking about night two yet, but they had to give at least, you know, their one night where they're happy. Everybody goes home happy. They had it. Yes, they had it. And but they had a hell of a show. Night one was stacked. I told you I was looking forward to night one. I, I believe it. Yeah. That was the first time in WrestleMania history the tag titles main event of WrestleMania. Oh, shit, that is. Yes. Because the first meeting was a tag team match. It was the first. Yep. And that, that was the last that time. That was Hogan Mr. and Mr. T versus Piper and Orndorff. Yeah. And then. She don't the, like Orndorff. The story <laughs> played out well. Because Sami Zayn, Haluva Kick, Jey Uso. Yes. Twice. Man. For the win. Oof. It was it was needed. It was a good ass moment. Goosebumps. And and that was night one. Who no. That was night one. Night. Now night Dos. two. Dos <laughs> kicked off with Brock and Omas. We were talking about it earlier in the day. What match is gonna possibly kick off the show? And I'm going down the card. I wasn't we, we, that. we thought it was going to be the Hell in Cell, but like, nah, it's, it's too light out there. The next thing came to mind, I was like, oh, we need Brock. Yeah, you did say that. It had to be Brock. What do you think about the Brock and Omos match? It was a nice showing for Omos. I wasn't expecting all that from uh, Brock. You know, all he needed was one at five, and that was it. Which is, is man, Brock. <laughs> if he wants you to lay down, you're going to lay down. So, obviously, it was a great showing for Omos, or Omos but... Yeah, Yo, so that match, Omos didn't get the dub, but he was made that night. Yeah. That reminded me, I told you this earlier that night while we didn't record, it reminded me of Hogan and Andre. Oof. Andre, he was limited that night, but he still shined. Oh, yeah. And Omos, he did the damn thing. He... He made whoever did that. To, I'm like, no, you never seen Brock get beat up like that. Not, not like, a big show, not nobody. Kane. Well, maybe Samoa Joe. Yeah, that was but a, that, yeah, that's like a fight, whatever. That was but a you, fight. you never seen nothing like that before. No. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, oh shit, oh my, I'm about to win this. I thought so too. Yeah, the next thing you know, Brock hit him with a suplex and F five and match over. All right. He's still shine, but okay. What's next for Omos? Like, That's the only thing I feel like he, he needed the win. But where were they going to go with him? That's the thing. I have no idea. It's... He, well, he's not one of those characters that needs to like have a title. He's a show. He's a, um, he's an attraction. Attractions, you don't even show them every so often. You don't bring them out every night. Why don't they get the Hurt Business back together? That'd be nice. All them guys... Get Lashley back together. Have Omos. Like, okay. Whoever is up and coming. Run through the gauntlet. All right. You go. You got to meet Omos. Uh, fight Omos after that. You know. He's the last one. Mm. Like, you can do something like that. Well, that, there's something else we'll talk about that. Because uh, I remember in like, one of the episodes we talked about uh, the whole Tom, the more combat tower. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about that. Yeah. It, it involves the main event. All right. All right, so our next match was the Women's Showcase featuring Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, Liv Morgan, Raquel Gonzalez, Natalia Nyhart, Shotzi Blackheart, Chelsea Green, and Sonya Deville. Man, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> oh, and when, like I said, Ronda, tap out, done. She didn't need to do anything. They didn't she didn't do nothing that match. Like, I thought, I thought, okay, they seen the men's match the night before. Maybe they're going to step up. That match was terrible. No. But it was... It was terrible. It's it, sad because a lot of those girls don't have a lot of TV time, so 
you know, you can see the rust, man. <laughs> Yo, Michael Cole said Natalia been here like 14 years and never got a win at WrestleMania. Well, you know what, Michael Cole? She ain't got a win at WrestleMania again this year. <laughs> God yeah. damn, Matty. Can I talk about Michael Cole, man? Cole is the MVP. Yes. Cole is the man. Yes. Look, if you guys want to check something out, check out Michael Cole's WrestleMania reactions from this year, previous years. Cole is hot right now. Yes. Cole is doing his best work. I don't know, maybe because he don't got Vince in his ear. Cole Yo. has a little Pat McAfee in him. Yo, oh. Pat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yo, Michael Cole is on his shit right now. Mm. And I love it. Like all this shit talking from the uh, IWC talking about Mike Cole this, Michael that. Yo, fuck you right now. I'm loving it. This is the guy that we that he's the voice of WWE right now. Toby. JR might have been the, the voice of WWE. This is the voice of WWE right now. There you go. There you go. So like Abel said, Rhonda and Shannon got the dub. Snap. Done. Don't mean nothing. They get a future world's title match. Tag title match, yeah. and most likely they'll win the title. Yeah. That's it. But match number three of WrestleMania Night 2. One of my favorites, Sheamus, Gunther, and Drew McIntyre. Three big meaty men slapping meat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, oh, my God. You want to talk about a slobber knocker, as the words with JR would say, Shit. they was banging. They, were at they the, was going at it. Yeah, man. they were at when the butcher she, shop. When Sheamus Chopping gave, who it, did he give Gunther or Drew, like, like 20 of them joints? It the, was. The beat the ballad? Oh, call? my God. I can't even. I think it was. Yo. It might have been Gun- Gunther. Yo. And then the chops. Like, yo, I just love that European type of wrestling. Yo. Dude. Like, me and you best friend, but I'm going to knock the fuck out you. Yeah, like, we're going to apologize after that. Be. And yeah. After the match, Gunther got the dub, but you see Sheamus and Drew Lane next yeah. to each other on the ground. Like, yo, we went through war and we still ain't win this, but yo. That's exactly how that's we do That's what though. you do. That's how you still WrestleMania. That's how you do it. We told, well, I told you, Gunther is, oh, he's the next guy up. And you know what? Michael Cole said it, and he... He refreshed my memory because the IC title was always one of my favorite titles because that is the working man's title. The heavyweight title, the universal championship title, that's the one who's going to put butts in that seat. Yep. Gunther and that's what that Roman seat. is doing right now. But Gunther, he will defend that title with his heart. Yes. Because he's not going to be the guy who you're looking to chase it. Yeah. You're going to be the one that's going to be defending yes. it. And he's what one of the longest reigning intercom champions right now. I think he's about to break Hungry Tongue, right? No, Hungry Tongue's like 400 days. He might, Gunther might get him. Oh, definitely. Gunther well, might. he doesn't really need to. Yeah, he, I mean, but a guy like that, you could just put him on the marquee, he's gonna sell it out. I would, yeah. yeah. Will we ever see Gunther and Roman? Gunther and Roman, yeah. Imperium mm. versus the Bloodline. Oh my God! We'd have to have one more person though from Imperium, and can they get the Imperium um, underlings hot enough to go against the Bloodline? You don't need to have four. You have three. But yeah, you gotta get the you gotta get the Lud- Ludwig and uh, G- uh, Giovanni, Giovanni Da Vinci, whoever his name is. You gotta. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta build them up a little more. Yeah, great guys, man. Yeah, they they they're great talents. Yeah, but you never know. You never know. Yeah, let's see what happens in the rest of this year, the twenty twenty three. How? Where would you have them fight though? Survivor Series. You gonna wait that long? Keep on building. Well, uh, all depends on that bloodline story. All depends on that. I think we already know where that that story is going, but. We called it a long time ago. Hell, Cody even put it out for him, too. Cody put it out plenty of times, so eh, we're we going to see. All right, so our next match of WrestleMania Night 2 was Asuka versus Bianca Belair. Well, I knew Bianca was going to take that dub. I feel bad for Asuka, man. 0-5 at Mania. Sheesh. Is she 0-5? Yeah. Yeah? No dubs. 
I remember she lost. She lost her streak. It wasn't to Charlotte. It was around the streak to Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. Um, she lost again in like a tag team match. Lost. Was she? Her. Was she the Kabuki Warriors? Was she her yep. and she lost that right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Never won. Unfortunately, you would think a character like that would win, but she's a badass. But I don't know. Like the whole build up to the match, I wasn't feeling it. No. But it was cool once Bianca came out and had the little girls from Compton. I forgot the name of the group. I think it was the Divas of Compton. Divas of Compton. Yeah. They came out there whipping their hair like Bianca and the little the little girl who was with Bianca. I guess earlier that day her mother passed away. Yeah. But she still wanted to perform and she did the damn thing. And yeah, good, good much, for you. Girl. Yeah, much respects to you. Much respects to WWE for doing that for that little girl and you know for her family. You know. On the positive note, you know? Yeah, you got to do that. other than that, the match was solid. It wasn't anything it, special. It, it wasn't nothing special. I felt like it could have been a lot better. Maybe if Oscar was a heel. Yeah, because the way it was going in, I was so confused. What is her direction? Yeah, like they didn't touch. Bianca never got hit with the mist. No. So, like, I didn't know. And then the finish of the match, basically the ref got bumped. Oscar went for the miss and missed Miss, it. Yeah, and then, like, yeah, and then I don't know. It, I was so confused. I'm like, what is going on here? It it was, you know, whatever. It's a it was a solid match. Bian- I'll give them what, that, they but... said what Bianca three peated at WrestleMania, something like that. Yeah, so she beat Sasha, Sasha, Oscar, and she beat the the year before. Was it Charlotte? No, she didn't. Fight no, she didn't fight Charlotte, Charlotte yet. No, we're, oh, I'm waiting for that one. <laughs> I I can't tell you, but hey. Who's next for Bianca? That's it. You know, I've been saying you get Charlotte now that she's taking time off. You can push her to SummerSlam. But I still want to see Rhea and Char- uh, Rhea and Bianca go at it. Are they going against each other at uh, NXT? Uh, it might have been a match. Ooh. I think they did. That's when Bianca wasn't winning with the, like the big matches. Because I know her, Rhea, and... Uh, Raquel, I think they're like all like tight. Oh, yeah, okay, they're yeah. like that tight kin right there. So that might have been it right there. Oh, uh, no, because she's getting that title shot. I will say uh, Raquel, but she's not ready just yet. Well, on Raw, they show Raquel come off the tag match and Rhea just standing yeah. right there. So you never know. She's smiling, but you know, they friends. Just another competitor, another opponent for Rhea Ripley. That's all that is. Is she on SmackDown or on Raw? Who? Um, Raquel. SmackDown. Okay, so that would probably be the, the right opponent for Rhea, not, not Bianca. Yeah, but we'll talk about Raw a little later. Okay. It is what it is. And like I said, SummerSlam is the next major pay-per-view. Build some females up and... Money in the Bank. Forgot about that. Yeah, that is true. That, that I is think true. that comes before SummerSlam. It so. does. It, it's in... July, I want to say. Is it July? Or June? June, July, something like that in Ooh. London. That's all I know. That was in London? Yeah. Oh, so the my next passport, tr- baby, so. <laughs> you got Backlash coming in uh, Puerto Rico in May. Then okay. you got a Saudi Arabia show. I can't think of the name of it. Crown Jewel, probably. Probably Crown Jewel. And then you got Money in the Bank. And then after that, you got SummerSlam. So. That Money in the Bank is going to be real crucial, I'll tell you. This dog trying to make an appearance. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. So next matchup, you got Shane McMahon versus The Miz. Oh, Shane. Unexpected Shane. Yeah. So the whole Pat McAfee thing for night one is pretty cool, but why recreate it and have Miz fight somebody else for a surprise? I don't know. Just to like, get somebody else on the show. It was, it was not even needed. I know. It was not needed whatsoever. I know. You're talking, you're preaching to the choir, bro. It was not needed. The man came out trying to do his little shuffle. Before he did, he blew was, up. Yo, he that, blew up. Then he had to walk down to the ring. Well, before he went down the ramp or after? Before he walked down to the ramp. He was trying to do that shuffle. He was blown up. I don't know if you've seen his expression. Yeah. He was blown up. That, that ramp didn't help neither. Yeah. And yeah. then. Poor guy, he, just he like did, his daddy. Yeah, then he did a leapfrog. Done. Well, like he twisted his ankle, and that was it. He was done. Then they had to improvise, bring out Snoop, which the worst people's elbow I've ever seen. 
Snoop, he took over, did what he had to do, you know what I'm saying? Improvise, gave that punch in that people's elbow. He, I don't know, Snoop, well, he was high when he took the glasses off. I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> I didn't know what he's going to throw. What did he throw tell out. me? Somebody said he should have thrown an eighth out there. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> my boy Adrian and his crew on the All Marks Pies said he should have threw out an eighth. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he should have just did that. And then the fans in California, they will have a good time. Oh, but, man. That would be some shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our next match on WrestleMania Night 2 was a Hell in a Cell featuring Edge and Finn Balor, the Demon. What do you think about that match? <sighs> Besides the uh, stoppage, great match. It was a good match. The interest is on fire. Oh, yeah. When Finn came out with the Demon and the old Finn Balor music, and he came out with the Purple Flames, the only I thing I didn't that. like but it was still kind of light out. And... You know, happens, you, it's, you're in well, LA. it's West Coast. You can't, you can't, you know, you can't help that. But he came out with the the flares and it was purple, still incorporating the Judgment Day. That was pretty dope. Then when Edge came up through the ring, uh, through the the stage, I was like, "What the hell is that?" With that silver ass mat, Woo! that skull mat, that shit was dope. Oh, yeah, I like that. And then it had the the devil's wings. Yeah. And then it went to his Honest Day music. That shit was fire. And then going down to the ring, you see in the back of the jacket. He paid tribute to his old brew group. That was dope. Yeah. Fuck you, Christian. But yeah, it's still. <laughs> it was I had to get that in there, dog. It, it was still dope. I, I, I hit the nose. It. That's it. That's it. But no, it was it was dope. Only thing I didn't understand why under the ring they have a like a red weapon for Edge and purple weapon for Finn. I didn't like, yeah, like I that. That made yeah. no sense. Like, does it make a difference? No, just I guess to incorporate which side they're on, but like, who cares, bro? Yeah, like, it don't make a difference. Like, just leave that, it the same way yeah. it's always been. Yeah, like, no. Unfortunately, like, yeah, for no reason. Like, that makes no sense. Yeah, that stop it. I feel so bad for him, though. Like, when you so, see the um, what went on, you're like, yeah, Ooh. yeah. So we all watched it, like, yo, the Hell in a Cell match. He got a little blood. You can't see the blood because you know he got the paint on. Like, why? Like. Okay, whatever. Like, Dude. let him go out and do his thing. That was a two inch gash. But yeah. Till the next day, until he posted a picture on Instagram, yo, that shit was yeah deep, some real deep. For someone who had a couple scars in his life, I got one right here. Woo! Yo, that shit was so deep, like they did the right call of yeah. stopping the match because that man could have possibly died in the middle of. A yeah, match. he would have lost yeah. so much yeah. blood. Yeah. So hey, so WWE, respect. yeah, respect for that one, like. You yeah, know, you don't at know. first, we because they didn't show us nothing. Watching on TV, you know, well, we pissed off production like, for that because honestly, if any any other company, they would have just kept shooting around. That's, like, that's all that microphone they got, man. The mic- yeah, so yeah, props to WWE and their production crew. You know, for props that. to Edge too because he was keeping us distracted about that. He had to, yeah, like yo, moving around the ring, you know, keeping it on about him. Like yo, good shit. That, that's some veteran moves, like yeah. If that was like an amateur or someone who hasn't been in in um sorry, who hasn't been on the show that long, he wouldn't know what to do. You'd have been sitting there, but yo, know, keep moving, get the camera on yourself. Great job, Ed. Exactly. Great job. And like the match was solid. I, I enjoyed the match besides the cut, what happened, but it yeah. is what it is. The show went on. I was Business hoping was Finn would have won, but I, I wish Finn would have won, even though I'm an edge guy, but Finn needed him more because edge is still part-timer but. well especially the way he's saying like i only have so much time left exactly what are you trying to t- tell us by that i mean he's gonna retire soon i know that but jeez, yeah. edge like is he gonna get one tether one left like what's he got in him <sighs> damn man he can't be the one to take take the belt off of uh, roman no way i didn't say that i don't see that happening but i i would be upset if he if he'd be the one. Oh, i would i'll be upset there's only, right and I'm, now, and I'm an edge guy. I, I would want to see edge. There's only one guy right now, and we'll talk about that at the moment. Right now, there's only one guy. All right. So our next match is the main event, and we've been talking about this. I've been talking about this. I've been hyped. Yeah. And I told you who I wanted to win. Yep. It could have went either way, but the main event of this night two was the American Nightmare, Cody Rose, and the Tribal Chief Roman. Reigns. Wow, the entrance. It was they didn't have like no special entrance. They just it didn't matter. They didn't, they didn't they need it. Thing. Cody came out. 
the fans, they, they were hot for Cody when he no. came out. And then, boom, the pyro had, he came down. He had Brandy, his wife there with the his, baby, uh, daughter. Liberty. Liberty. Yep. And then he had Amanda Huber there with uh, Brody Jr. Yep. Uh, and, you know, he gave Brody the weight belt. And, you know, it was a cool moment. And then but you talked about then, this before, then, too. Oh, I'm going to get that. Oh. And the tribal chief came out. And he had tears. Everybody acknowledged him. So I'm like, oh shit, this is kind of like out. this is kind of like uh, Hogan and Rock right here. Yep. Like you think about it, because think about it, the whole buildup. These guys didn't touch. Nope, they did not touch. It's just all verbal sparring. That's it. Yeah. And Kobe, uh, Cody's a Tupac fan. He's rapping Tupac, Tupac the <laughs> that night. <laughs> so our early uh, SmackDown, but that was pretty cool. But it was cool. But I told you. I think maybe maybe like a day or two before WrestleMania, I said, yo. I said, you remember when WrestleMania 31 when Roman was going against Brock? Yep. And he had his whole family there? Yep. And that was supposed to be his night to win the title? His night. His night that somebody cashed in, Seth freaking Rollins cashed in, and that was so the highest of the century, as Michael Cole deemed it. Yes. I said, what if that happens when Cody's out there kissing his family, kissing the baby, doing his his uh, his biz, and he don't win? Like, we talked about this yes. for weeks. Yes. What could possibly happen? He can't talk about Dusty no more. What could possibly happen? And then the bell rang. They was booing Roman like yeah. they was bull- like Roman was getting his shit in. Yeah. Then Cody got his shit in. Then Solo interfered. They threw Solo ass out. Yep. And then next thing you know, it was a Cody show. Yeah, it the was. Fans, it was like when Rocky fought Drago in oh, yeah. Russia. He, he turned the crowd around. The fans turned, and they was all in yes. for Cody. Next thing you know. The Usos came in, yeah, I and thought, then boom, uh, we was like, oh shit, Cody about to lose. Yep. And then KO and Sammy came in, cleared the house. But oh shit, Cody got a chance. Cody doing all these top yeah. significant moves, and Paul Heyman interfered, and then Solo comes running back down wow. with the hood. Ah, Samoan Spike. Ah, Yo, spirit. honestly, before that, I thought it was. I looked at you, and we did the. You know how we always do. Yeah. We was like. Is this about to happen? Yeah. Is this about to happen? They didn't do it. They did not pull the trigger. And the reason for me, I think the reason why you can't pull the trigger that early on Cody is because Cody um, came in at WrestleMania the previous year. Yep. Beat Seth Rollins three times. Got injured. Came back. Won maybe three matches. Nah, I need your time. Nah. Yeah, bro. Nah. You still got to work your way up. And then he answered at number 30. Exactly. Work your way up to the ring. Cody, I love you, but it wasn't your time at that moment. And it's like, um, I forget, I, on Raw, there was like a sign that said, Cody, oh, not Cody, uh, Dusty would have uh, loved this. So, like, Busted Open Radio, Dave LaGreca was hot. Yeah. He said it was Cody's time to shine. A lot of people was pissed off as a guy. Being up the fucking chair and all the shit, mad. Yeah, like, motherfucker, I remember. It. Is it is Roman that bad? Like no. I remember, I went to a few WrestleMania's Roman main events, and people had signs that we were riot and Roman Reigns wins. He didn't win. He he didn't win. But what you still hating on the dude because he in the main event? Nah, they're they're hating because they love Cody so much. He's finally like won the crowd over. The way he did it too. It, it came that close. Yeah, Once Samoan spike, and that was it. Excuse me. It was it was real close. He he had it, but yeah. honestly, that was the greatest. But did the move. better man win? Well, of course, the right the right move was no. made. The right move was made. Like you said, hit you're so close to one thousand. He's gonna get that. He is gonna get that. Yeah. And you know what, guys? Like I said, what what looks no. more special? Like you said. Exactly. The guy who beat the guy after 1,000 or the guy who beat the guy eh, 943. So Roman will hit 1,000 if he can make it to May 27th. I Googled that shit earlier. May 27th of 2023 will be 1,000 for Roman if he can hit it. 
And we already got alert earlier today that Roman's not fighting that backlash. He might be in Puerto Rico. He ain't fighting. So, there oh. you go. There's another day. <laughs> Add on to Roman. Oh, boy. Hey, don't get mad. A world champion was defending titles every 30 days. There's another pay per view in May, which might be, I think, Money in the Bank. He might defend it. Against who? Who knows? Mm. Who knows? Do they split the belts or they keep the belt on one? I know. you. We already just talked about that with the nah, tag belts. I feel like with Roman, I feel like if you split the belts now, it's. It's just going to tarnish a belt. Like, all right, this, this shit don't mean shit. I agree. You can't do that. Do you get rid of both belts and make one single? You got to. You got to. Yes. You I agree. You got to. Like my man, woo, Ric Flair, former NWA champion, travel all around the territories in the United States, Puerto Rico, Canada, and all that stuff. Why not? Yeah. Why only be not? One. One. And there's only one to be the one. And that's your tribal chief. That's it. Yeah. Well, that's it for WrestleMania. So we're going to do a quick recap about Monday Night Raw. Matter of fact, before we get to Monday Night Raw, so Sunday night, there was uh, an alert going around saying WWE was sold to Endeavor Entertainment or Endeavor, whatever it's yeah. called. And basically, they're partnering with UFC, and the one behind that is Vincent Kennedy McMahon. How do you feel about that? I'm actually kind of glad, in a way, because it's going to be in good hands, regardless. Seeing how the UFC is being ran a little bit, just, uh, you can see some crossover. You see a lot of crossover, mm-hmm. anyway. It's all about money. Yeah, It's all about money. They can, I see some about... What, $21 billion? $21 billion. $21.4 billion. Billion. So he sold it, his company for $9.3 billion. $9. And something about $21.4 billion. I don't know what the other... Exactly. That's a lot of fed. Yeah. So a lot of people dislike Vince McMahon because of his... The personal things. I mean, personal, I, I get personal it. shit. Whatever, that's how you feel. It is what it is. But when it comes to the business... You're still going to watch. Yes. You're still going to critique. Yep. It is what it is. And you know what? Vince is ready to walk out the spotlight. And he did that. But the, I think the owner, founder of Endeavor, he brought him back. Why? Because Vince is a genius. He is. And Vince is not going to be in the limelight. He's still going to be backstage, but he's not going to uh, monitorize the, he's not gonna micromanage the, everything. He's not gonna micromanage the little thing. He might change the main event or two. That's about it. But honestly, if he changed the main event for uh, night two, good job. Because honestly, even though I wanted Cody to win, he cannot go against the tribal chief. No, that's Triple H booking. Triple H said it. Oh, even Triple better. Triple H booked that. Even better. It's a story. Like I said many times before, and you might want. The action that happened right then and there, the climax of the movie. Like I said, it's a movie. Yes. You want to sit on your couch for two, three hours. You're going to watch. Yep. And you're going to, you might get disappointed at the ending, but you will watch the next chapter, the next saga, the next episode to see what's going to happen. And that's what they're going to do. And that's how WWE keep luring you in. Yeah. Well, that's like, going to happen. It's like uh, when you watched um, Infinity War, you you told me you was pissed. I said, <laughs> I love that. You was so hot. I was like, yo, I love this. And you're like, why? Because you're going to have to go against the champ again. Real yep. you in. Like I said, so that, from that point going forward, Monday Night Raw kicks off with Triple H talking about Endeavor. Well, he ain't. Yeah. Mention them by saying, then, now, and forever, and, WWE will always together. be here, and we're not changing. They don't need to change. Boom. And after that, he acknowledged the tribal chief. He came out. Which was shocking because you think about the rivalry those guys had. Exactly. He, that just says, you know what? Hey, business is business. You know what Triple H said was best for business. Yo. He said that. Well, speaking Here's of best go. for business, did you? I know you. I, we talked about this before the podcast. Did you watch the Yoko um, A and E stuff? No, I didn't see it. You, you gotta watch that, yo. Honestly, the way um, that whole Anawa family 
with uh, WWE. Yo, though they need WWE needs that Anoa family badly. That's where all the money's at. Yeah, right. You got Yoko, you got fucking Rock, Kishi, Kishi. You got Roman now, yo. Why you say that? It, it's the way they are. Like basically, Roman is the head of the table over there right now. I agree. He's the one bringing in all the money, taking care of all the family and all I that. Agree. Just like Rodney was, just like the Rock is, still took care of his family. Yo, it, it opened up my eyes to the business about how that family's treated. And we've talked about before before we even had a podcast. We were like, who's the most important family in in uh, wrestling? And we said the McMahons because you know they create everything. Yeah. Not anymore. It's the Anawa family. And there's plenty more of them to Oh to yeah, show there's up. St- still plenty yeah. more. I was watching a video on TikTok. It was an interview of Roman. I think this past WrestleMania. He was like, uh people they wanna be me. I think Roman was a full character. They wanna be me. They can't be me. They can't get my my contract deal. Nope. They can't work. A couple matches a month. No, they can't. They can't beat me. He was like, who's that on my level? The interviewer just stayed quiet. He was like, if they had a problem and they want to run to the boss, come see me. I'll talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> yo. Like, yo. Mike, where is this Roman four years ago? He wasn't, he wasn't been there. He needed that. Yes. He needed that. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Roman's the man. But there's already a story already there brewing between that whole family. Between um, Uso losing and uh, him retaining. Oh, yeah, of course. Like you said, he's the tribal chief. But is he the highest chief? Because Solo hasn't been listening to him every now and then. And remember, he was sent by the elders. Who are the elders? Afa, Sika, Kishi, and one Dwayne Johnson. That's only one. The other three you just said don't matter. Yeah, Dwayne, he teased a little and something. I, and I believe there was a video showing that yeah. he was um, he was honored as a high, a high chief. Yeah, yeah. So you can be a tribal chief, but you're not the high chief. Moana. <laughs> 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 All right. So we're going to get to Monday Night Raw right quick. It kicked off with Roman. Cody came out. So usually I have story time or yeah. I have something I have to say. He went right to the point. Yeah. He went right to the point. He won a rematch that same night. Yeah. Paul Heyman, nope. Yeah. Nope. I'm so, Paul Heyman guy. Yeah, you're a Paul Heyman guy. I'm a Paul Heyman guy as well. And, uh, man, Paul Heyman basically said the only way you can fight for a title again is if you can find a partner that has nothing to lose against Roman Reigns. Yep. And he found that partner. I didn't even found it. He, the, the guy partner, came out. The guy came out. I thought this man was gone. I Brock thought so too. Lesnar came out. I remember calling you. I was like, holy shit. I was hyped. And then I thought about it within a minute. I was like, he's going to turn on him. I knew he was going to turn him. But I thought that at least going to have a match. No. It didn't even happen. The bell didn't even ring. Yo, he whooped Cody's ass. And I know people are going to say, oh, you didn't see that. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no. No, when you no, see Brock I, come out, like, oh, Brock. Like Paul and I even said, told you Paul Heyman phone. said earlier that night, Brock got nothing to lose. He doesn't. And you know what? That keeps Cody away from Roman for now. Yeah. Brock ain't leaving any time soon. Yeah. So your main event, possibly in Puerto Rico, could be Brock, Brock and Cody. That would be a good-ass match. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yo, that that's actually great booking, honestly. I don't know if Puerto Rico won the F five out there. I don't know <laughs> too much going on out there. <laughs> Shoot, you might not want that. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> but that's the perfect guy to keep away from Roman. And you want to keep Bill him as a as a baby face? Smart booking, great booking, great oh. booking. Shit, that's it. So. Ray Mysterio, Hall of Famer, twenty three, came out, talked his talk. Awesome. Austin Theory came out. It was the night after WrestleMania, like John Cena said. How do you think he did to, with that crowd? Who, um, Austin? Austin Theory. Honestly, the crowd, honest, it, I couldn't believe they didn't hijack the show. 
it's been one of those years where I'm like, you're not hijacking the show like before? You can't. No, but you we've we've seen the shows before yeah. and it just take over the crowd I, takes over. But I feel like the last like maybe two years or so it died down. Like you're not seeing that type of I'm kinda glad anymore. In a way I'm kinda glad because it's just like I'm tired of the beach ball shit and all that other crap. Like, come on, man. If you're going to you going to a show, enjoy the damn show. Yeah. Go do that shit at your house. <laughs> Somebody threw a damn rubber chicken at Cody. <laughs> I fucked up. That shit was funny. Oh, uh, that was funny. Yeah. I can't lie. <laughs> All right, so after that, Theory and Ray Mysterio had a match, and Theory got the dub. Yeah. Theory got the dub. He should have. He needs it. So within three nights, Theory beat John Cena and Ray Mysterio, two bona fide Hall of Famers. Agree. Is Theory the new legend killer? No. No? No. All right. No. All right. He's got a couple more legends to go. So after the match. Edge. Oof. Yes. Oof. Okay. You weren't expecting that one. Nah, I expected. All right, but after the match, you had Bad Bunny. Well, Dom came. Dom came out talking that shit. Yep. Beat up his dad. Yep. Bad Bunny got involved, and then Priest came out. Oh, I got a lot of phone calls about that. What? They really thought Bad Bunny was all fucked up. Yo, that choke slam was La- rough. Latin America, they're like, "What the hell's going on? They're calling me." Like, what's going on with Bad Bunny? I'm like, it's all part of the show. Like, you know. Yeah, like. <laughs> like, you wrote it. I would have wrote it like that, too. Hey, you want to bring controversy and, you know, bring more uh, people involved? Do exactly what he just did. And where are they going? What's, where's the next pair of you at? Otto Hico. There you go. That's how you make money right there. And that's all I got for that segment. But after that, you had The Miz. Come out talking his shit again. Yeah. Well, but this time, what a crowd, no? Like, what a crowd reaction for Matt Riddle. I'm kind of actually glad he's back. They needed another baby face for the roster. But let's see what they're going to do with Stay him, Stay clean, too. Matt. You, yeah. You, you, you don't need, need that shit. You need it, man. Maybe a little weed. But man. calm me down. Fans was legit mad about Monday Night Raw. Because everybody's like, oh, Vince is back. What? So what, what what shows have been back? It was a solid show. Yeah, I thought it was a solid show throughout. You had it was more talking than matches, but you start off hot, you end it off hot. Exactly. What else do you need? You, you want, these guys just came off of WrestleMania, exactly. the biggest showcase of the year. Exactly. You want to kill you guys the night after? No, relax, dude. I know you might expect somebody brand new. You don't need a brand new guy every freaking nah. night after Mania, bro. You, hey, it, it, the it, roster's loaded as it is. It'd have been cool, but it Who's is. Who's we gonna is. bring out? Jay White is on Wednesdays now, so that's it. Okay, so Nick exactly. Alden's still a free agent. But you know what? He doesn't need to go over there. They don't. He, Build NXT again. Yeah. Build that shit again and see what happens. Or if you were gonna bring anybody, it'd probably be Braun Breaker. But I'd save him. And Carmelo Hayes and Braun Breaker had a great match over the weekend. And yep. Carmelo Hayes got the win. I thought Carmelo Hayes was going to make it to the main roster. Or, you know, Raw or SmackDown. I want to say main roster. And he won. So, look, like he's still going to be NXT. But we have breaking news. It's Friday night right now as we're recording. And there's going to be a brand split coming up soon. Yeah. So... Braun Breaker might be on the main roster soon. You never know. He did everything on NXT. Yeah, I mean, if you mention the draft, <laughs> and that's a good free agent to pick up. That's it. Reminds me a little bit of Brock. Nah, he reminds me of Steiner. Mm, <laughs> yeah, obviously, but like a little bit of Brock where he's that super athlete where he can just dominate. Not always skilled on the mic just yet, but. Just like his daddy and his uncle. No, nah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes, but a couple more questions. Since WrestleMania is over, everything you've seen this past weekend, what was your favorite match of the weekend? The main event, can't even deny that. Yeah? And it probably was probably the, one of my top five Mania matches of all time. Yeah, that's, that's definitely up there. I was completely just, like, taken aback. I was like, holy shit. And my emotions went up, down, up, down, like, Oh man, it was it was definitely up there. That's one of my time matches. And 
it's not WWE related, but I did watch Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor, the opening match of Commander and Vikingo. Oh, El Hijo de Vikingo. What? <laughs> I'm not about the spot fest like that. But, yo, them boys got busy. Yeah. Them boys got busy. Now, I'm not saying that's my favorite match of the weekend because that, uh, I, that, I, that Cody, and, uh, Cody and uh, Roman match. I've been showing you highlights too. about him for a while, though. Yeah. And I was like, yo, watch. He's going to show up on TV one of these days. And you're like, what? Yeah, he's going to show up. Yeah, but that, like I said, Cody and Roman, that was dope. But I'm about to say, I love that Sheamus. Gunther and uh, Drew. That was probably one of my favorite matches. Of the, you of the can't weekend. go wrong with that, man. I, I, that's my type of match. I like that shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then who had the best costume of the weekend? Costume? Oh, um, outfits? Yeah, outfits. Yeah. Uh, Finn. For me. The, the paint, yeah. The paint, yeah. The paint was dope. And then that, whatever the hell that is, that that's helmet. So dope. Too bad it actually matches fucking gas. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, it was a great weekend. WrestleMania is over. And basically, it's the new season for WWE, and it's only going to get better. Next pair of view coming up is Backlash in Puerto Rico. And then we also got AEW Double or Nothing. Yep, yep. that's coming up in it's May as May. well. Yep. So it is a great time to be a wrestling fan. Everybody's going to watch. Better watch Raw because I'm going to find out what's going on with this whole uh, Brock thing. Oh, speaking of, you remember when Roman was uh, asking Paul, did you know he was over here? He was actually still at Raw? Who's talking about the Usos? No, when uh, Paul at, when uh, Roman asked Paul, did you know he was here? If, I don't know if you know. Oh, yeah, 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 about Brock. Yeah, like, like oh, like you in cahoots again? Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't, I don't he, know nothing about Chavo Cheese. He never really, <laughs> he really never answered them, though. <laughs> but now he's right though, because usually after WrestleMania, Brock is gone. For yeah, months. he said that, but yeah, I don't know. He, yeah, but no. he said he handled it about uh, with Usos. But did he really mention the Usos, or was he talking about the whole Brock thing? Because even though I saw the, the turn and you saw it, little, little, and that can slow, just, slow building. That's all they're doing, and that's that's when Roman would be like. You talking to somebody behind my back? I was like, you still talking to your ex? Paul got beat up one time already. Don't by matter. Souls are taking him out this time. Oh, man. What are we going to do? I told you. Summer Slam. That's what? when they're either going to you know what? ascend I mean, or crumble. I didn't even one think about other. it till now. Remember how he said the elders sent him? Solo was sent by the elders. And remember when Brock was feuding against uh, Roman? And uh, Paul was telling him something in Samoan, and he looked at him like crazy. Yeah. Could he part be part of the elders too? Who? Paul. Mm, gotta go on Google Translate to find. No, out. I know that, but he rolled with the the, the Samoans, Alpha and Sika, and all of them. And when he told him that, he looked at him like, "How the fuck you know that?" He could be a honorary. Right. Wise man, not just a wise man, wise man. Honorary, uh, uh, I just said the count, like council. Yeah, not yeah. council. Uh, wise man. Yeah. Uh, I just lost my train of thought. But you know what? It doesn't matter what Paul, Harman, Paul Heyman did, because you know what? He also rolled in the car with Sabu and Rob Van Dam, smoking that weed, <laughs> and he can't even pay the damn bill. You know what? This is a good ass show. WrestleMania is over, and we're gonna keep on watching. Keep bringing you good content. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for supporting us. We're gonna keep bringing you great content. Until then, I am Dom. This is Abel, and we are out. Boom. <laughs>